Would you kill for love? That's the question we all have on our mind. Today we're going to be talking about a Sabrina and how she got in a crazy relationship with a family she was adopted by. My name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Let's go ahead and get right on into this video. We're going to start with the interrogation and we'll go from there. The police would get a second opportunity to interview Kevin, which we have included later in this video. For now, the police hoped that Sabrina would have more to say about why she took Lisa's life. After she received medical attention, Sabrina was brought in for interrogation. Now, we're gonna talk about, the funniest thing about this thing is obviously you see the video, you see everything, you see the title in the left right corner. Shout out to Red Street Crimes. Link in the description, you wanna see the rest of the video. I wanna say this, her reaction to what they're about to tell her here in a little bit, I'm gonna tell you what my, what, nobody knows what the reaction would be in the moment, but here's just what I've seen, okay? What I think would have really happened, but this also tells me that somebody's been watching too many movies. So, let's go ahead and continue. What do you, uh, what do you recall? From yesterday? Mm-hmm. Getting done with my homework? Getting, I don't know, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And what was that? And we're at home? Mm-hmm. Would anything unusual happen? I don't know. Everything went fine according to what I knew of. Mm hmm What what happened? Starting from? Starting from when you got home from school yesterday. Okay, that was okay. No. Um, I got home. I went to do my home. Then we had hamburger helper. And then I went back to do it my one mark. She did doing her homework for like one. I went upstairs, no, it was like 12. I went upstairs, trying to go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep, so I went to go get some Advil. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to Because my head hurts, because I have really bad headaches. I wonder if they feel like And. So her story is going to be, she came home. She's doing everything. She's doing her homework until one o'clock in the morning. She goes to go get some Advil ibuprofen and from there until now, or pretty much just a little bit after when everything happened with the 911 call, she doesn't remember anything. So she's trying to say, like, the only thing that makes this, she's saying she blacked out from the time she got the ibuprofen to the time. Um, she doesn't even know at this moment, and you're going to hear this, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you. At this point, she does not know that Lisa has passed away. So she's saying from the time she got the Advil pills, to after Lisa's gone, she doesn't remember anything. She doesn't remember any of the police showing up, nothing. She All she knows up to this point, she doesn't remember anything until she knows she's got bandages on her hands and now she's talking to these cops. Come on, guys. I just have a hard time believing that. Here we go. After that. Where, where, where did you take um, ibuprofen from? In this time, I was bathroom. That's where? where I told. Where? Mm -hmm. Was uh, Lisa still awake? I don't, I don't know. I just remember going in there, having the bottle, starting to shake to get the meds, and then I'm gone from there. Thank you. Okay. Do you remember what the what the bottle said? Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. The point that there was a word. Okay. Are you are you allowed in the bathroom? Only um to get Advil or something. Like that. Uh -huh. I call it Apple. I'm right. every question. Other than that, no. Not unless they're there or, you know, we're told to. So what, yes. what did Lisa say to you then when she saw you in there? Don't know. I don't know if Lisa... Did you get ears? No. I don't remember anything at that point. Huh? What do you remember? Everything except... Were you taking any illegal narcotics yesterday? No. You don't do drugs. You don't do drugs? When was the last time you did drugs? Three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago? Okay. 
Um, you have not had any, any illegal drugs since then? Okay. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit to where she finds out. This is where I split ways. When she finds uh, Lisa's passed away. Did you have a thing? Well, investigating it. Yeah. I, I remember. I'm pretty sure you did. Yeah. Remember what you were doing prior to getting to the ambulance? No. In Lisa's room? Getting mad. With my headache. I may make sure I didn't miss the part, guys. That's why I don't get it. Mm hmm. No. Sabrina claims that she doesn't remember what she did, and she has no idea why her hands are bandaged. If this is true, then she doesn't know Lisa is dead, and the detectives can use her reaction to finding out to see if she is telling the truth. I love the zoom in to him. Hey, how do you get along with Kevin? Kevin's a miracle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he's more than one that helps me out. Mm -hmm. Because this is Megan to deal with. Megan has an mental instability herself. Okay. And so we made agreements a long time ago that if I need anything, that I can go to Kevin. Mm -hmm. And if it was major that she needed to be involved in, then he would ask, but not to be concerned about small things. Mm -hmm. Because it's already stretching her out. It's her job and Haley and Megan. How about um, with Lisa? How you with her? Me and Lisa have never been the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never tried to hurt her. Never had any. That's a curious, that's a weird thing to say to me. I never tried to hurt her. Like, to me, like, that would, that would, obviously detectives already know the answer. I mean, at least they have a hunch. But to me, that would raise questions in my head if I didn't believe it was her. Like, if I'm thinking, maybe she didn't do it. My question, well, first, <laughs> come on now, she got bandages on her hands. This woman has been stabbed 200 times. So there's a lot of questions. <laughs> but, she thinks that, her, I don't know why she thought if she said, now this is her being young, she's only 18, but she says, I I never tried to hurt her. That statement sounds insane. Like if I was telling you about my mom, I'm like, my mom is great, you know, we've had some uh, we've had some rough times, but I never tried to hurt her. He'd be like, why would you say, why would you say you never tried to hurt her? It make more, way more sense to be like, yeah, we didn't really get along, we really butted heads. Um, but for the most part, you know, we tried our best to get along, but you just know how it is. I'm older um, and, you know, I'm trying to get out of the house and she's telling me all this stuff. And I, I just disagree with it. I feel like she's trying to run my life. I don't know anything a teenager would say, but it's rare that I've ever talked to a teenager and said, hey, uh, how's your relationship with your mom? I never tried to hurt her. <laughs> what? <laughs> never had any thoughts of hurting her. Now. To be fair now, I am saying that she is probably saying this because she said earlier in the thing that she's being charged with a homicide. So I'm pretty sure that's playing into it. But still, strange answer to me. Hurting her? Yeah, it's been emotional and mental abuse from her to me. Like, even if I was being charged with a homicide, I just don't see myself saying, but like, I never tried to hurt her. I would, because I would have just said, hey, we didn't have a good relationship. But it was nothing crazy like that, you know? She put her hands on me. I don't know. Maybe, not maybe I would change. Who knows? Fighting, mm -hmm. but restraining me so I wouldn't give an iPod to her. And I don't know. I, I don't know. She never seemed to like me, and she's been wanting me out of the house. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on how Lisa is not alive now? What? What is your what are your thoughts? Oh, on you that? know what? At this point, she says she's being charged with the homicide, but at this point, she doesn't know Lisa's even dead. So yeah, no, I go back to what I originally would have said. That would have been a strange thing to say. Sorry. Not alive. I, I, well, she pretends. Maybe you don't understand. That's that's what we're talking to you about. She ain't gonna kill me. Mm-hmm. You just said you're being charged with a homicide. Anyway. You should have told me I did it. Yes. I, I, most of that blood was probably hers. That's why we need you to concentrate and think about what happened. There's always two sides to every story. All right. So to be clear, once again, obviously I've seen a video, but 
There's the reason she acts this way. But here's the thing about pleading insanity. One, it rarely ever works. Another thing about insanity is if somebody was to tell me right now, Trey, you're being charged with a homicide. Um, and I'm like, what? At uh, first, be yeah, a confusion. And then next would be, you know, your mother's dead, right? <laughs> How would I know that? See, I would come at more of an angle of confusion than um, Lisa's dead. She's dead? I wouldn't react like that. I'd be like, she's dead. What do you mean she's dead? If I have no recollection of the death happening, I would act just like a person who doesn't... I would be like talking to the police like, what do you mean she's dead? Like, if I don't know that, what are you talking about? You're telling me she's dead? How is she dead? I'd be asking far more questions about how does she die? Are you uh, like, she stabbed, she got shot. Like, what do you mean she's dead? You know, and, and how am I supposed to know that? I mean, you're just now telling me she's dead. How am I supposed to feel about it? You just told me my mom is dead. I have no idea how that happens. What do you expect? I would just have more of a confused, more of a confusion than I would have more of a, I'm already sad. I wouldn't believe it at first. Most people, when you tell somebody like that, it, they go into shock. If I walk up to you today, be like, hey, your dad's dead. You'd be like, what? Even if it's the police, it'd be like, are you serious? Hold on. My son is dead. I mean, you know, I'm just, I don't know. Maybe that's me. Maybe I'm confused. But I don't see a lot of people just immediately start crying unless they were expecting the person to die. Like their son ran away and you finally, and then even then you hear most parents when they hear, hear their child's dead, they don't believe it. They don't believe it for a long time, you know? And we want to know what you had to say about it. And we know you were there. You know, there were officers that got to the house after the, you know, they were called, so we just need you to focus on what happened. You know you got, you were doing homework, and you know you got yourself to the bedroom to get the medicine. What you need to do now is bring it all together and think real hard about maybe what happened next. And then now explain how you got some wounds to your hands, okay? <sighs> this part right here drove me up the walls like you've never been a murderer okay we know that <laughs> it's like who are you talking to when you say that are you try to tell yourself that i've never been a murderer duh if you have been a murderer you wouldn't be out on the streets right now we know you're not a murderer or you've never been one, at least before this moment. But that doesn't help. That doesn't mean you can't be a murderer. Just because I've never worked at a store before doesn't mean I can't work at a store now. Anyway, so we're going to move forward. I know y'all are wondering what is happening with the guy. What happened with the relationship. Well, we're going to go ahead and get into that. Because eventually this girl is going to, you know what she's going to do, baby. She's going to spill the milk. Spill all of the milk. Let's go ahead and get into it. I know it's called tea, but I like milk. No, I don't like milk, but I like the word milk. Don't ask me right. why. You have a court hearing. Watch the video. Monday. And at that time, they'll look to see if you have a bond and what to do. All right, for you. While Sabrina was in jail, Kevin spent most of the life insurance money. He paid off his home, bought cars, purchased another home in Florida, and even took flying lessons. I bet you're wondering what the, what about the life insurance. Didn't tell you that part, did I? <laughs> the wife had life insurance. So the whole reason all of this happened is because the wife had life insurance. Life insurance. And that's why I asked, would you kill for love? The reason that she went down for this man is because this man had life insurance on his wife, and they were going to get a divorce, and if they got a divorce, he wouldn't get any of that money. Oh, the life insurance scandal that we always hear about. And so, yeah, because he wasn't implemented or indicted, they, I, they obviously gave him the money. So he got that 750000 wow. Sabrina started to feel like Kevin didn't want her anymore. So in August of 2013, she agreed to testify against Kevin for his role in Lisa's death. Sabrina claimed that Kevin had used her love for him to manipulate her. The day before the incident, Kevin was driving Sabrina to school when he stopped the car to talk to her. He began to cry and he told her that he would end his own life if Lisa wasn't dead. Basically, he convinced me that I wouldn't get caught 
we pretend like nothing happened. We wouldn't know a robber broke in, make it seem like, you know, tumble the jewelry box and leave the door open, hide the knife, or it was supposed to be a gun. We were supposed to go to a shooting range the week before the weekend of what happened but Lisa got mad when he told her because she wanted to go along you don't spend any more time with me you're spending too much time with her and so that didn't happen because it happened before if I were to went to the shooting range and know how to use a gun then it would have been it would have happened with a pistol that his uncle gave to him wasn't registered in his name couldn't be followed back to him I was like okay well then just do it with a knife and he was like you want to get that up and close and personal like you want to be that personal so it was your suggestion you use a knife instead of a gun correct I he had me convinced it was only going to be like 25 years and he would be there for me afterwards and that he would bail me out if it were that you got caught or anything and I told him look you do know I'm risking my whole life everything that I've done getting my high school diploma being able to do everything that I was planning on doing in life and he was like well this is all on you I don't I had full trust in him I don't I don't know and I don't trust people I've never been in love before and so I don't want to say that's what I blame it on but that's the only thing I could think of that would completely blind me from all the hints that were dropped all the what are you doing is this not wrong type thing because before I was a manipulator and I was beat at my own game that doesn't happen I was blinded you know from getting the life insurance that he had on her seven hundred and fifty some dollars and we would either get a new house sell the one we had pay off the trailer or the cars whatever and then either get a house or build a new one it was all planned out. Me and you will have a perfect relationship. Haley can be raised the way she needed to be. Me and you would have a perfect house and you'd have everything you'd want. You'd go to college. It was all going to be a perfect lifestyle. So what made you decide to tell us about Kevin? Because for some reason, I, I'm religious and the truth prevails. And for me to go down for this, when I wasn't the only one involved. It didn't seem right. And when you start thinking with your head and not your heart, you realize if somebody loved you, they wouldn't let you go down like that. Using Sabrina's testimony, Kevin was indicted. So now, what does that end us with here? Would you kill for love? Goodbye. I'm just kidding. But would you kill for love? The, the real question that comes out into all this is one thing I want to say is that this all happened with an individual who was adopted by a family. OK, this girl dealt with anxiety, depression and a whole lot of issues, including being bipolar. They accepted her to the family. Kevin, being the sicko that he is, decided that he wanted to get in a relationship with his now adopted daughter. Right. This is and let me just go off on a little bit of a tangent. Please just give me two minutes. This is what I talked about the other day when I was talking about stepdad, stepfather. This is the same thing that happens with adopted fathers as well. Men who are really into this disgusting life, I'm telling you, men who are addicted to either the sex or addicted to pornography are going to normally fall down this road, man. They don't see women as women, man. I'm telling you. They see, he saw her as an object. And I'm telling you that there was no love in that because he saw her as such an object that he was willing to cheat on his wife. Not simply cheat on his wife, cheat on his wife with his adopted daughter. Not even cheat on his wife with an adopted daughter or a, a girl he brought into the house. He was willing to let her go down for taking the life of his wife. This girl got manipulated. It, I'm looking at the wrong camera. This girl got manipulated into... Excuse me. This girl got manipulated into obviously doing some crazy damage to the wife, right? I want to say this. Number one, okay, men like this disgust me. Men like this are vile. Men like this are some of the worst people on the planet. Not only was he taking advantage of an 18 year old little girl who he adopted when she was 16, I believe, or brought into their house as a foster home, took advantage of her 
knew she was struggling with anxiety, depression, and already knew she had low self-esteem, because that normally all comes together. Plus, she had bipolar. Used his wife, used his wife as a way to get her on his side. All to get this whole plan set up to have his wife life taken from her. For what? $750,000? Was this all about money from the very beginning? Did he do all this stuff with this girl just for the money? Because we know it's not love. Let's not be fooled by ourselves. Let me also say this. Sabrina stabbed this woman 200 times. So you have to ask yourself, did she just need a reason? But here's the thing. Do I think she should be in jail? Yeah. She did get 30 to life. You know, so did the uh, other guy. The guy also went to prison for the rest of his life. <sighs> she fell for the manipulation. But I think a part of her wanted to do it because she was already dealing with mental issues. Right? I think she probably would get out earlier. Maybe. Then the thing. But we'll see. Time will tell. I want to say... When you're young... It is so, this is what bothers me so much when it comes to the kids, man. People really think that these young teenagers and kids think so normal. They think that they have all their emotions together, that they couldn't be manipulated like this, that they're, they're always smarter than the older people. And it's just like, they're not. This man got a girl to stab his wife 200 times. 200 times! Because he knew what kind of girl this was. He knew that. And, and, the, and the saddest thing that I didn't tell you guys because it was just too gruesome to hear in the beginning was the little girl. There was a little girl who called. Right? Watching this girl stab her mother to death. The little girl. You forget there's another girl in this family who watched her mom get stabbed to death. Oh, and she's going to find out this was all for... Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, all because her dad was cheating on his mom, her mom with the girl that she was hanging out with all the time, that was supposed to be her best friend in the house because it was another sister. This is why I say it's so important to be careful who you get in with. Please, guys, notice the red flags when it comes to porn addiction. I'm serious. I hate tying everything to that all the time. This is obviously evil. Okay, the, the 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 stabbing and all that, that part's all on its own evil. But also, when another woman comes into your home, okay, even including a little girl, and I know that's disgusting to think about. When you are dealing with a man who is a porn addict, when you are dealing with a man who's a sex addict, and then you ravel that down with somebody who's money hungry, you're asking for a bad scenario. Women, do not overlook a porn addict. Do not overlook it do not look, overlook a sex addict a man who is into these things it's gonna go downhill if you bring another woman into the home from a maid from a tutor to a babysitter to a stepdaughter to an adopted daughter it's all disgusting but y'all let me know what you guys think there's so much that could be said about this uh, i think it's obviously disgusting that this man would do this to her but at the same time she did do it and uh, I mean, there's no jury that's going to say that you stabbed somebody 200 times that they're going to let you go. They can't let you back in the world. Because even if she did it because she was crazy, let's say she did. Still, a person like that can't walk the cannot walk the world. Somebody who stabbed somebody 200, 200 times cannot walk around. There's no way she should be on the streets. I don't care how she got there. The fact that she did get there lets me know that this person is a danger to society. I'm gone.